This video was brought to you through the EA Game Changers program. As you guys know, if you watched my world and towny overview for Eco Lifestyle, I got early access hands-on with the brand new expansion pack Eco Lifestyle for The Sims 4 and in this video we are gonna go through all the new gameplay elements from the new traits and aspirations to the new objects that come in the game to how your sims interact with those objects, what children can do or can't do in this pack, the new jobs, all of those things are hopefully going to be covered in this video right here. So of course, we're gonna start off in the place that makes sense to start off, in Creator Sim. What have we got to work with in Creator Sim in this new expansion? Well, there are two new aspirations. One comes under Nature, which is the Eco Innovator. This sim wants to build a better, greener community. This one tends to focus on the neighbourhood action plan, so encourages you to vote, encourages you to get out there, meet your neighbours and work on those influence points, and also focuses on one of the new careers, which is the civil designer. I'll be going into more information about that when I come to talking about new careers, but yeah, that's basically what what this aspiration focuses on is a bit of a walkthrough, but definitely needs more work than say the aspiration that came for Island Living, which was like, go get a suntan. It's not like, feed the grubs. And then the second aspiration that you will find is Master Maker. This sim wants to become an expert at fabrication. And I bet you can't guess what this one focuses on. This focuses on the fabrication skill that comes with this expansion and pretty much the freelancer career that's included, creating candles, fabricating things and recycling things. So what new traits do we have to go with these? The first one is the maker trait, obviously fits in very well with fabrication and all of those things. These sims become happy when making things, they become sad when it's been too long since completing a project on a fabricator, candle making station, juice fizzer or woodworking table. They do not receive negative effects from crafting or repair failures. Then we have the Freegan trait. These sims reject consumerism and prefer to reduce wasteful spending by any means. They enjoy finding reused or thrown away goods and foods. In fact, they have the best look at finding the highest quality treasures in dumpsters. They may become tense or uncomfortable if they spend too much time earning or spending simoleons. I had one issue with this trait in particular. I did give this to the sims that I had in my household in my gameplay and you will see this, but I don't think that those negative, uncomfortable emotions should reflect freelancers. I know they're still making money and like corporate and all of this, but they're pretty much working for themselves and I personally just don't really see that emotion having an effect on sims who are working for themselves and like are their own boss and taking care of their welfare. I don't know, that was just like one little picky thing that I picked up on whilst I was playing. I was like, mm, doesn't really seem right for this sim to be tense when they're kind of working their own hours doing something that they probably love. Then we have the green fiend trait. These sims are happiest when living on a green street and will continuously work towards making their environment environment more eco-friendly. Ties in quite nicely with the eco-innovator aspiration because it's all about going green and really helping your community like push that green eco footprint. And last but not least we have Recycle Disciple. These sims are rabid recyclers that benefit from recycling and rummaging for bits and pieces but should they go too long without indulging their hobby dot dot dot. I'm gonna give you a spoiler alert alert, they swipe their own objects in their own house to get bits and pieces which are kind of the currency of recycling. I was really confused, I was like is this a glitch? Like my family just keeps stealing from themselves and then it's not in their family inventory or anything and the gurus then confirmed that if you go too long and they get too tense from not recycling they'll just recycle their own objects that they already have in their house. So don't worry, it's not a glitch. 
that is part of the game, which can get rather annoying. So I'm just putting it out there. If you want to have a recycled disciple, make sure you have them recycle things like at least once a day if you don't want sticky fingers in your household. And a nice little note on these traits, kids actually have access to both the green theme trait and recycle disciple. Kids can't use the actual recycle machine, which I mean, if they have this trait, I'm like, why can't they use the machine? But also they can just recycle certain things. They can search for recycling in dumpsters and stuff like that. So kids do have a few things that they can do in this pack and they have access to those two traits, which is quite nice to see because usually kids don't really get access to a lot of traits in The Sims 4. So you jump out of create a sim and then you're into your gameplay. This is actually what I was talking about with apartments because you have a lot of big items and you can't play them outside. However, I have just watched the Guru live stream and apparently they've even added new upgrades to like treadmills and stuff. So if you're living in an apartment, it's even more challenging to live eco-friendly, which is actually pretty cool. I didn't get to experience that. I didn't even think to check treadmills in this overview. Um, so I'm very excited myself to jump into that and see how it actually affects it. But that's what the guru said. So you know what, you got set up, you're in your brand new apartment or your new house here in Evergreen Harbour and I've been pretty much putting emphasis on how this is like community driven and they really wanted to put the community aspect to eco lifestyle. So the friendly face Nox, the poster boy of this pack, he comes over and he's like, hey neighbour, do you want to hear about making our neighborhood more green? So I was like, why yes, Knox, I would like to. I mean, I live in an apartment. I don't know what I can do to make it more green. And you get this notification pop up that says green neighborhood action plans. So he's kind of like an NPC. You can play as him if you want, but he's an NPC of Eco Master. So basically he's just coming to introduce you to how to start up in the game. And then he'll pop over randomly, which I will talk about in a bit. So welcome to Evergreen Harbour. My name's Knox and not to toot my own horn, but people regard me as a bit of an eco master around these parts. And I utterly love talking about living the eco lifestyle. Did you know that you can vote on neighbourhood action plans? They're called NAPS for short. If you want to help get our neighbourhood to a better eco footprint, there are a lot of great options you can help me in supporting. Do it for the trees! So voting for green initiatives, eco-friendly appliances and clean energy production. Voting is easy. You can vote at either a public voting board or even at your own mailbox. That's how you do it in base game and other worlds that come with other expansions. No excuses to dodge voting. Just make sure you have enough influence points. I've given you a few to get started. Voting ends on Monday at 6 p.m. Check the Symology panel for more info. And then you get a second visitor who's a bit more in your face. She's a little bit louder than Knox, you know. He's a bit more like chill hippie vibe, whereas Bess is a bit more higher. I'm gonna tell you how things work around here and you better listen to me. I actually really love this character. If you watch my world overview, you will already know that I enjoy Bess. So once again, you can talk to her and she will give you a pop-up that basically explains profitable neighborhood action plans. As we just found out from Knox, these are known as naps and you can vote on them. So her says, cool, cool, cool. Thanks for the air, champ. Best sterling at your service. And let's just say I'm a bit of an I hate this word, entrepreneur, when it comes to business dealings. Why can't I say that? I can never go on Dragon's Den. Guys, please remind me that I can never start my own business because I can't say that word. Do you want to make some quick money fast? Of course you do. And you know I'm your go-to sim. So let's go get this bread. Is that an LGBT reference? Excuse me? The more we get into dealing with some serious simoleons here, the more we'll need to start voting on neighborhood action plans. Do you know about those? Yeah, Knox beat you to it. I'm sorry, Bess. 
These are some prime initiatives for us money makers to vote for. So she's already trying to talk to you like you're on her team. So you've got modern development, tech support, and promote creative arts. Pretty much all the ones that will enable you to make money. But don't get caught napping on your right to vote. Get it? I've given you a few influence points from my personal stash personal to get you started you can vote at either a public voting board or your mailbox and again she gives you 10 you can also invest in legal and i use that phrase very very loosely legal money schemes so you basically give best money and she'll either get back to you with a I'm sorry, a few days later she'll call you and be like, I'm really sorry to tell you lad, but it fell through, um, we didn't make any money, or she'll give you, I've never had a profit out of her, let's just put it that way. I once gave her 10,000 simoleons, I got 4,000 back. Bess has yet to earn me a profit. Kind of glossed over this, but there's a bunch of ways to earn influence points. You can basically do it by introducing yourself to new people, becoming friends with sims, basically anything positive that you can do surrounding like meeting new people and also working off the naps that have already been put in place. If you like agree to the terms and you take part in the activities that they suggest, you can also earn influence points through that or you can just turn testing cheats on, shift click the letterbox and then just cheat yourself loads of influence points if you want to become a dictator and don't give anyone else the say. There's also now a new part of the options which is just called eco lifestyle and here you can pause the eco footprint so it can stay in the state that you currently have. So if you don't want to play with it at all, just keep it in neutral. If you want to pause it whilst it's in industrial, you can. That affects it save wide though. So just keep that in mind. And you can also turn off NPC voting. So if you want to be a dictator that way, you can also just do that. But those two aren't the only two friendly faces you will see. There's also a master maker NPC who is actually Tina Tinker, who I introduce you to in my world overview and you also get random chance cards from random NPCs so basically this random NPC got in touch with me and was like hi yes I'm sorry to inform you but your great 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 ancestor has passed away and has left you some money I would love to give it to you and I obviously asked okay but what are the conditions and she got back to me with actually the only condition was that you have to ask what are the conditions and I guess you did that condition so that means you get the money and that has never been in the game before. I really like to see that kind of NPC playfulness. I think it's something that The Sims 4 has been lacking a long, long time and we've had a lot of surveys about it like how do we have NPCs have more life? How do we get them living their lives? And this is one step closer towards that, I feel like. So just a fun little update that comes with this pack. But there are certain naps that bring the community together. There's one called Free Love, where Sims basically can roam around naked and they just all make out with each other. It's one big love fest party and nobody gets jealous. And it's wild to see townies hooking up like two townies at the same time and then they turn around and find another new townie and make out with them it is crazy I was like what is this but I also loved it so there are naps that affect the community itself and make it just feel a bit more lived in there are naps that obviously focus on Bess's route which is making money I really would have loved to see like someone really negative I would have loved to see like a rich like old dude NPC who just wanted you to use all electrical items and heaters and wanted to create smog because he just hated the environment that much and he just wanted to stay rich. Like Bess is a fun character but I would have loved a bit more consequence to it. Like she's fun but she's not like this evil and I really would have liked that. And then you have the action plans that Nox wants you to use which is all about going green. So I'm not gonna go through all the neighborhood action plans because that would just be me reading one big list. I will have them up on screen so if you want to like pause and read them that's absolutely fine or take screenshots and come back to them later. But in my opinion I think there's a good range to be honest 
honest, like I said, I would have preferred ones that seem to have a bit more consequence. A lot of them either seem good for the environment or just making money. And so it doesn't really seem to be about making the environment bad. So that's one thing I would have liked to see. But I do think there's a good range. I think there's some fun ones like the bag overheads, the free loves, sharing is caring, where sims can basically get away with stealing objects that you leave like outside, which I think is hilarious. They can steal your bikes. So there are some definitely fun ones. And then if you do want to focus on the ones that actually change the environments and things like that, there's modern day looking ones. There's also eco footprint ones that raise your eco footprint to be more green. So there's a solid few naps. With the naps, you can have up to four neighborhood action plans in progress at one time. So four of them can exist in your neighborhood. You can actually repeal them. So if you don't like one, you want to get rid of one, you can choose to repeal it. So basically what this means is your sim has to go out and collect five signatures. So they have to ask people around their neighborhood. This is a bit bizarre. This does remind me of the realm of magic thing where like non-magic people were coming into the realm because you can just ask anyone. Like it doesn't have to be people who actually live in your neighborhood and anyone can vote. So that kind of brings out the immersion a bit because you'll see like Belagoth voting or ask Belagoth to repeal and you're like, you definitely don't live in my neighborhood, but I can use it to my advantage. So really, am I that bothered? Once you've got your five signatures, you can go back to your mailbox, check your naps or go to the board, check them and you will see a red box around it that tells you how many signatures out of five you have I actually collected six so anything over five is absolutely fine and then at the end of the voting process it will be repealed and it will disappear the first nap that I had my sim Reagan go after and completely dominate the vote on was actually green initiatives because I realized that this was one that would start changing the environment and that's what I really wanted to see because of the community vote for green initiatives in Port Promise these docks are about to get a lot greener. Within the course of the next week, residents will see more and more bushes and trees sprouting up in the area. So obviously this has a bit of a positive influence on your eco footprint to be more green. And then I also decided that that wasn't enough. It was nice to see blossoms sprouting up. But I put my foot down and decided that we needed more. So then I next voted in the modern development. So this this basically meant that everything that was currently a little run down in my area from the roads to the fountain over the next week would all progress. So I would definitely suggest checking out those two, especially if you want to see the environment change around you and see what effects that NAPs can have. And these also change apartments. So this is pretty cool. Apartments aren't exactly the same as in city living. You don't have like the noisy neighbors or anything like that and you also don't have a landlord who comes to visit. But like the ones in city living, you can't actually design the outside of the building. So that's just a shell that your sims live in. However, the outside of the building designs itself. Depending on what naps you vote in, you'll actually see the buildings shift to a more eco-friendly looking space. However, naps aren't the only thing that use your influence points. So you can use your influence points to also travel to one of the brand new community lots. This is a lot type. So you travel to the one in your neighborhood. And again, it will have a board outside. Do not think that that is for neighborhood action plans. I know the board looks the same, but it's actually something completely different. You can then vote on that board to put into place what community lot you want. So there's a choice of three. You can have the marketplace, which is basically this really cool area. It really reminds me of the Spice District, like when the market's on in the Spice District in San Myshuno from 
from City Living. It kind of looks like that. There's kind of tables set up. There's a food van where you can obviously get all the brand new recipes such as crickets. Yep, you can eat the crickets. So you can choose to sell candles. You can choose to sell your fizz that you have made in this pack. And I really like the marketplace one. There is also the community garden, which is what I originally voted for because I wanted to see how it worked. So basically this turns it into kind of like this urban jungle and it has all the bugs. So they have bug houses dotted around and they also have plants and people actually plant things. So they'll lay a harvestable on the ground. Sometimes I think they plant them, other times they just leave them on the soil. So you're sim has to plant them but sims here if you get the garden lot they'll actually interact with the garden and the bugs and everyone's kind of doing their own thing and it's just really nice to see it definitely builds up that feeling of community i was scared that i was gonna have to like decide everything but that wasn't the case and then the last one that you can vote on is the maker space so this is pretty much an area that adds all the new interactable hobbies. So there's like recycle machines, there's candle making stations, there's also juice fizzers. So you can really like go there and work on your fabrication skill. Oh yeah, the fabricating machine, that's also there. And this is really handy for those sims who live in a smaller area, such as the apartments, or they just don't have enough money to buy those things. So you can go vote on that. And then when the voting closes, it will magically transform itself. So let's talk about a little bit of the behind the scenes of these spaces. It's basically one lot, but it's four lots in one. So if you go into build mode, there's the rundown version, which is obviously how the game starts it out. Then there is a build specifically for the garden. There's a build specifically for the marketplace and there's a build specifically for the makerspace. You can completely demolish all of these and recreate your own. This is pretty damn awesome. I don't know if this means that there's hope for my community lot that I've been wanting to see, which is basically an ever-changing lot that introduces like new groups and hobbies. Like maybe you could have like a knitting group meet there like every Thursday morning and a toddler play group like every Saturday afternoon. I don't know if that would ever be possible. This build is insane. And these can also be placed down in any world. They don't need to only be in Evergreen Harbor. You can have as many as you like in Willow Creek. You can have as many as you like in Sulani, which is real, real nice. However, one point to note about these community spaces is you actually need to travel to the lot to trigger that vote. So it won't change automatically. I didn't find that from my gameplay. I I had to physically go to the lot to get people to start voting. And another quick thing to note is you can only vote in your neighborhood. So you can't go to another neighborhood and vote for action plans or on the community spaces. You actually have to live there. So I basically went into one different family in each neighborhood of Evergreen Harbor, just so I got to experience all three. And that's a really good way of doing it. And I've talked about the makerspace, so it only seems right to talk about the new actual skills that come with this pack. Two definitely seems to be the magic number. We get two new aspirations, we get two new careers, and we also get two new skills. So the first one is obviously tied to fizzing. That's a a brand new playable object that you can interact with. It's a pretty large machine that you can put fruits into, vegetables, roses, roses? Flowers in general, not just roses. You can put flowers in there and you basically turn it on, leave it for a couple of Sims hours. This depends on how many harvestables you put into the machine and also what type of harvestables they are. So you plop them in, you leave it for a few and then the screen will have a check mark when your fizz is done. If you put one harvestable in there, you'll get one bottle of fizz. If you put like five or six in there, you get a six pack of fizzes. I think it can make zeltzers, I think that's how you pronounce it, kombucha, and also just juice fizzes. And this is actually a level five skill. So this is classed as a minor skill. So keep that in mind when you wanna cheat up your juice fizzing, you put 
the minor, not major. Sims with this skill have a natural curiosity for the art of the fizz. Whether it's a hobby or a side hustle, experimentation is key. These sims can be found trying different ingredients and processes to hone their craft. You can obviously drop these onto the tables at the marketplace. You can also buy a table and just put it at your home. They work the same way as the city living ones and the jungle adventure ones, so you can start a yard sale. And the second skill is actually fabrication. Candle making does affect your fabrication, so that brings up your fabrication, as does using the fabrication machine, which is what my sim is doing right now, because she is in one of the new careers, that ties in very nicely with fabrication. So why buy brand name when you can make it yourself? Recycle old stuff that would be thrown out otherwise and use the bits and pieces to make something all your own. Fabrication skill is built by using the fabricator and by creating candles at the candle making table. Increasing this skill unlocks new recipes to explore. Also going to work as a civic designer as you get promotions, you can also learn new recipes. This sim right here actually learned to make food on the fabricator and you can also learn different recipes by talking to your neighbours. You can enthuse about fabrication or juice making and they'll kind of give you handy little tips or your sim just gets bored and doesn't get anything out of it but sometimes it can be beneficial to your sim to actually interact with your neighbors if you can't do it in real life right now you may as well do it in the sims there's a whole set of furniture that you can actually unlock through the fabricating machine as you level up in your skill and there's also some extra pieces of furniture that you can find by dumpster diving and they can only be recovered through the trash or using debug if you've not got the patience for that but it's a fun little challenge to try and find all of those pieces of furniture i think all of it is really cool looking it's kind of hipster kind of grungy i like it to make candles, you actually have to have wax and there is a brand new harvestable bush that comes with Eco Lifestyle. I know some of you watching are gonna be interested in this. So there is a soy bush where you can collect soybeans to make into a fizz if you want to, but you can also harvest soy wax from those bushes. And it's basically a little cube of wax that gets put into your Sims inventory. If you can't find one, then you can also buy these through the candle making station so don't worry and your adult sims can actually create four different types of candles so they start off with just dipped candles then they move on to cylindrical candles and then you can make carved candles and then once you have completed this skill you can make certain scented candles i had sage actually create a death scented candle which i was honestly expecting to kill him i was like oh my goodness have i just killed my sim off fortunately that's not the new death type that comes with this expansion there is a death death scented candles that are made using death flowers are not it this basically just gives you a sadness moodler and the moodler exists whilst the candle is burning if you then proceed to put the candle out you get this emotion for like four hours. But speaking of kids, I actually asked you guys on my community tab what you wanted me to find out about this expansion and what kids could do was a big one. So obviously they can play with the doll's house, they can interact with the bugs, they can also use the dumpster, they can dive for deals, they can dive for meals, they can have a nap, they can also sort through recyclables which go into the recycling machine. They unfortunately Unfortunately, can't use the recycling machine so they just kind of swipe it and then get bits and pieces and they can use the compostables in the bug houses and that pretty much feeds your bugs but kids can also make 
candles. They can only make the dipped type of candles, which is the entry level. This doesn't help any of their skills at all. I feel like kids have been rather let down recently in packs, and I mean, I would prefer kids to now be able to garden. I think that would be great. Adults have a couple more interactions with dumpsters. They can obviously get down and dirty with one another and also the flies and the cockroaches. They can woohoo in dumpsters and it's a really fun animation. I mean, I watched it quite closely and it's it's in detail. They'll just do it out in public and I mean, if you have free love, that's absolutely fine. Go ape with that dumpster woohoo. And they can also try to make friends with the flies. I had my sim try to do this. So if you anger them, you do have a chance of dying from suffocation by flies. But Sage actually managed to basically get their blessing, kind of like gnomes from Seasons, and they gave him some cricket flower. I mean, I could have just gone to my bugs and harvested some cricket flower, but it was quite nice that the flies decided to befriend Sage. I don't know what it is about him, but apparently he's just a friendly guy. He's pretty fly for a white-haired guy. I'm sorry, that was terrible. I'll go. One part of this pack where the skills are super important is obviously when it comes to the aspirations, because you do have to reach certain levels and create certain things, but also, more importantly, the two new careers. So we get the civil designer career and we also get a brand new freelancer career, which is known as the maker. So Reagan here is obviously gonna be our little civil designer. I did only play with the green technician branch, but as a civil designer, get involved in planning and designing solutions to all kinds of environmental problems and chat to your fellow sims about how to make their world a better place to live. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but just to give you an idea of what this includes, you have to check up on your neighborhood action plans, you have to get out there and interview homeowners about pollution and how they feel about the environment right now. Obviously when you start going up in your career, you have to start working with the fabricator, so that's part of it. You have to create eco parts, you have to upgrade items to make them more eco-friendly, and probably the most important part about this job is that it is work from home if you choose to do so. I got my sim Reagan into the green technician branch, which basically meant that she could go on to owning a tablet, drawing up sketches of civil plans, and then also inventions, which is where the one and only smog machine, that's kind of the hoover machine that you see, um, that can suck up smog from one world, you can choose to release it in other worlds. I will say it doesn't have much of a consequence. I was kind of hoping that it would really bring, like, it would at least offer a bit of smog for like, I don't know, an hour in that area where you dump it, but unfortunately it doesn't. Um, it just kind of goes out into the world and then it's like, oh, okay, it was a bit lackluster, I feel like. And it really comes into play if you have a freegan sim or if you've just been dumpster diving and you can pull out these pieces of furniture that look to be charred. They look like they've been in a fire. They have ash all over them. The soot that you get from sims fires, that's what they're covered in. But you can use the smog hoover upper. I don't know what to call it. Let's just call it Nunu. Let's do a throwback to the Teletubbies. You can use Nunu on those pieces of furniture. And this is kind of the upcycling here. So you can basically renew them and get them back to their natural state. You can either choose to sell them on or you could just recycle them if you wanted to. So that's kind of like a side hustle that you can do if you finally unlock that smog machine. Obviously you can only sell it through your inventory. I don't think you can put it on like the tables or anything. That's something I would have loved to see and I think would have fit 
really well. I don't know, I've never tried it, but I don't know if you can have like the mats from the City Living flea market and sell furniture on there. I really would have loved a playable variant of that because then I feel like you could just put like this tarp down and then you could start a yard sale and actually sell your upcycle furniture. I definitely feel like that may have been a missed opportunity. This career is also where you unlock the infamous meat wall. It is fake meat. So when you get promoted to level five of the green technician career, you get the option to grow cruelty-free meat. And what you can basically do is choose to add it on to the vertical garden. And basically it just slaps this piece of meat down. You can choose to massage it, which the innuendos are gonna come from this. Simguru George already dropped one in the live stream where he was talking about massaging his meat and that's just the beginning of it I feel like like that meat is hung for sure and so you can massage it if you let it dry out it becomes jerky you can harvest it into cubes you can have just these meat cubes in your inventory which is so gross to think about you can also juice them i don't know why anyone would want meaty juice but that's a possibility if you want it you're welcome for that information vegans you can still buy this pack. Sim Team, what is this? Why can we name the meat, but we still can't yet name cow plants? Thank you very much. And then the freelancer is obviously just completely work from home, works the same way as any other freelancer career. You sign up under freelancer and then you choose to become a maker. And I decided to have my little sage who is definitely gonna be up on the gallery. I became very attached to them because this event was a little bit different than usual. I had so much time to play, which is obviously why this video is gonna be so long. And I kind of fell in love with this family. So maybe have to play them as my off-screen fam but I got him into the simply crafted freelancer so the trade is fabricator juice fizzer candle maker they all fall under this term of maker so simply crafted mission is to deliver handcrafted and responsibly sourced goodies to the eco-conscious sims of the world on demand at your fingertips devoid of guilt so light up your candles sip up your fizzy juice and relax on your couch knowing that they were all dipped, upcycled, or fizzed with love by a true artisan. This note was printed on digitally recycled paper. That was so hard for me to read. These include fabricating rugs or certain different types of furniture, creating different candles, and also just creating different fizzes. A little caveat, I'm really excited to see how this fits in with knitting stuff. I'm just gonna call it knitting stuff. I know that's not the name, but we have that Flopsy coming, which is basically like Etsy for The Sims, where you can set up an online store. So I'm hoping that that will be like backwards compatible with all previous packs and we'll now be able to sell when that comes out obviously we'll be able to sell like candles and juice on there as well fingers crossed that is the case if sims team if you're listening can we write that one down in the notebooks i'm sure it's already there i don't mean to threaten you but i would enjoy that Thank you. Finally, you have your eco footprint, which starts out in either industrial, green, or neutral, depending on where you choose to live in Evergreen Harbour. And I'm putting this one last because honestly, this is probably the part that I'm like least fussed about in this pack. And that's just due to my personal preference. I've never been a big fan of changes and environment changes in games. I mean, I like the gameplay to get there and it is nice to have an end point or an end goal that you are aiming for. And I will say it's a challenge. This comes down to a lot of responsibility on the player. I know that in marketing and the trailers that we've seen, it seems to come from like neighbors helping you out a lot, but they don't do that off their own accord. They'll vote on naps if you have that turned on in the options, but they won't kind of change their houses to make them more eco-friendly or more industrial. Remember that this eco footprint is set on a neighborhood level. So what I had to do was go to each house in my neighborhood and also the community lot, I had to go to the pub and I had to put in all the windmills, solar panels. I had to change some of the 
build and buy mode items to make them more eco-friendly. I had to add grass onto the roofs. There is a little tag in build and buy mode telling you whether materials are more green footprint or whether they are more industrial, which is quite handy. But yeah, you really do have to spend some time on this. I was also a little bit disappointed by the smog. It's not as heavy as the animation on the map makes it seem. It's definitely not as heavy as the trailers made it seem either and it's kind of just this murky yellowish brown haze that hangs around over your sun. I was just expecting more from what they showed off in the trailers. I always feel like they should put dramatic recreation on those like crime shows and it's a little detail but pretty important. There are new upgrades that you can do onto all of your appliances. They can either be eco-friendly or they can be industrial and the fuel cells are industrial. So if you want to aim green, don't install fuel cells onto your appliances because it means that your sims are using more fuel and obviously that's bad for the environment. I just wanted to point that one out because it's why I struggled so hard for like the first few weeks of my game. That is pretty much it for all of my gameplay footage. I feel like I hit all the key points and the key features. If anything was confusing at all, if you need any more explanation on anything or just have a query about any of this gameplay, then please do not hesitate to ask me down in the comments and I will try and get back to as many as possible. I'm gonna have a few more videos up about eco lifestyle. I still obviously have the creative sim to go over which is probably going to come tomorrow. I also maybe want to do a base game video but I also know a lot of people have uploaded base game videos so if you want me to skip that and maybe do like a Q&A for Eco Lifestyle then let me know. And to round it up I enjoyed playing through this pack. I do think there were some elements missing. I would have loved to see gardening come for children especially with the community gardens. It definitely feels like a missed opportunity. I also would have loved to see a little bit more on upcycling. I know you can obviously use the soot sweeper and then sell them through your inventory but having actual gameplay dedicated to that considering it's already in the pack would have been nice like an actual even a freelancer career or something could have been nice for that. But let me know what you guys think about this pack. What do you think your favourite part is going to be? Do you think the ball was dropped on any of these? I hope I hit all the main points that you were hoping for. I hope this informs you of whether or not you will or will not enjoy the pack and thank you guys so so much for tuning in. I will speak to you all tomorrow in my quick create a sim overview. Who am I kidding? It's not gonna be quick, it's me. We all know I love a good ramble. Bye guys!